a prominent team of war crimes prosecutors has released a harrowing report saying it's reviewed what it calls clear evidence of systematic torture and killing by the Syrian regime of President Bashar al-Assad. The report is based on tens of thousands of carefully cataloged government photographs that show the bodies of some 11,000 Syrian detainees. And we should warn listeners that some of the descriptions that follow are graphic and may be distressing. Most of the victims are young men. The corpses show signs of starvation, brutal beatings, strangulation. Some had no eyes. David Crane is one of the report's authors. He's former founding chief prosecutor for the Special Court for Sierra Leone, and he joins me now. Professor Crane, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, As you reviewed these photographs, tens of thousands of photographs, can you describe just a bit more of the the injuries that you were seeing and your reaction? Well, as we reviewed the photographs, uh, we saw clear evidence of pain and suffering almost beyond uh, description. These 11,000 human beings were starved, beaten, tortured in ways that, uh, uh, frankly, are really not describable on this program. And then they were killed. And this was uh, photograph after photograph after photograph, really indicating a systematic governmental approach to the destruction of all of these human beings in these three detention facilities that uh, they came from. And the starvation that that you're describing, um, the images that I've seen, and there were just a few of them, uh, the bodies were were skeletal. Well, you know, you if you look at them, uh, you, you, it's almost like you're looking at uh, the scenes from the end of World War II and Auschwitz and Dachau and other of those concentration camps. Uh, and then throughout their starvation period, it appeared that they had been beaten uh, and tortured uh, in very, very sadistic ways before they were finally executed on orders of uh, of the authorities. Let's talk about the source of many of these photographs. Uh, it's a confidential source who told you he was a military police photographer in Syria, working for the Assad regime, he said, for 13 years before he defected and these pictures were smuggled out of the country. Uh, what did he tell you about why he was photographing these bodies? Well, it was his job. Uh, he was doing that uh, routinely. His job was... Uh, to uh, forensically take pictures of dead bodies. Uh, When the Civil War began, uh, that increased to uh, almost 50 per day. Uh, He and his team uh, uh, continued to take photographs. But he also signaled, he began to see the significance of this, and in the way the bodies were coming in, far different than just normal deceased individuals. And he signaled to the resistance that I have a, a possibility of sending these photographs out. They contacted him. Uh, he was assigned essentially a case officer. He was, uh, in some ways, an asset. And he agreed to uh, make duplicate copies through a memory stick. Uh, all of all the photographs for a period of almost two years. And why was the Syrian regime photographing these victims? Well, that's an excellent question. You know, you always scratch your head. You know, why did the Nazis record the deaths and names of all of the people that they did? Well, it's very bureaucratic. It's very industrialized. Not only were they uh, marked forensically uh, with a number, but also the intelligence service had a number, and uh, there was also a processing number. But they wanted to uh, show death, certificates of death, and let the family know uh, that their family member had been deceased. Usually the cause and manner of death was either a heart attack or a respiratory uh, distress. You had forensic scientists look at these images, and you had uh, experts look to make sure that they weren't digitally altered. It was up to you to make sure that this source, this defector, was credible. Is there any question in your mind about what he was presenting to you? None whatsoever. You know, he was initially assessed, and then we went through uh, and then did the final assessment over a period of days, and he and his handler came across as extremely credible. Uh, you have to understand that the uh, that the members of the team uh, have decades of experience of international prosecution and the forensic team equally experienced. As a former war crimes prosecutor, were you looking at these photographs as possible evidence that could be introduced at a, a war crimes trial, if there were to be one, for President Bashar al-Assad? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a rare thing. It has. It's been since Nuremberg that we've had this quantified, specific, systematic documentation of the deaths of human beings. 
this is uh, incredible, important, specific evidence that I could get a conviction on beyond a reasonable doubt in a fair and open trial on this particular charge of starvation and torture of these detainees. Professor Crane, the report that you did was commissioned, as I understand it, by a London firm acting for the government of Qatar. Uh, Qatar supports and arms the Syrian rebels, is trying to bring down the Assad regime. Is that problematic for the credibility of your findings? Well, it's a fair question, and no, it's not, because at the end of the day, uh, you have to look at uh, the caliber of the team, the questions that we were asked. Uh, We had no association uh, with the government. Our remit was very, very specific uh, as to the credibility of the source and the evidence that he brought out. We did that without any kind of agenda, without any kind of specific uh, understated uh, conclusion. Uh, In fact, we would have not stood for it. Our reputations are intact on this report and that uh, we found and had no real association uh, with the government of uh, Qatar. We handed our report in to the London solicitors, uh, Carter Rock, and what they chose to do with it was their decision. But we are confident in the forensic science as well as the legal conclusions that have been made related to this horror story. David Crane, thank you for talking with us today. My pleasure. Former war crimes prosecutor David Crane, part of the team that investigated photographs showing the deaths of thousands of detainees in Syria. Professor Crane teaches at the Syracuse University College of Law.